Baron, six minutes. Please. And Deputy Prime Minister, I move that amendment at the outset of my remarks. My goodness, the Minister's really scraping the bottom of the barrel to create constitutional issues around a digital imprint. The reality is this is a reserved bill. This is about reserved, the reserved issues of the UK Parliament. If the Minister feels as strongly about this as he clearly does, he should be addressing these issues to his members of Parliament that attend the Parliament in Westminster. The bill we're debating today is about strengthening British democracy. And like many colleagues across the chamber, I have stood in many elections and what I've learned over the years is that regardless of the political context in which an election is being fought, listening to the thoughts and concerns of voters is at the heart of every British election. This is ultimately because democracy is about politicians being accountable to people and the people shaping the political direction of the country. Yes, of Minister. On Mr Kerr's key theme there of listening to the electorate in the example, would it not be a case, if we are talking about the respect for the devolved process, that while I was having these discussions with my Welsh counterpart and the UK Government, would they not have had the respect to actually listen to us and possibly give some ground in some of the many issues that we have problems Stephen with? Stephen Kerr. The, very often in our discussions, the Minister reminds me of his past profession as a salesperson. And I greatly respect that, because I was also a salesperson. I think he's, under, I think he's underselling his own ability to influence UK ministers by engaging with them. I think he's being very presumptuous in the conclusions he's arrived at as a result of the discussions he's had. Let me return to my theme, listening to the voice of our constituents. And that voice is the most effectively heard in the ballot box. And that's why the UK government has a duty to ensure that UK-wide elections continue to be free and fair. And that is what this bill does. The area which has received the most coverage and attention from the Minister this afternoon is the plan to introduce voter ID to tackle election fraud. But this is not the only purpose of the bill. Of course. Neil Bibby. Minister, tell me, out of 59 million electors in the UK in 2019, how many cases were convicted of voter impersonation? Stephen Kerr. Uh, I'm very grateful that the member considers me to be ministerial material. Addressing me as the minister, I look forward to the day maybe when that would be a reality. Um, but in answer to his question, there were examples at the last Scottish parliamentary election in this very city of uh, voter impersonation. And therefore, frankly, such is the sacred way in which we should view the right of a citizen to exercise their vote, that protecting it in this way seems like a very good idea to me. And I'm really at a loss to understand how any democratic politician could object to the idea that we are protecting those badges of citizenship, namely the vote, and of course the passport, which is another issue. Minister. Thank you, President Officer. During, during my speech, I mentioned Ruth Davison and her description of the idea of voter ID. Now, does the member agree with the former leader of the Scottish Conservatives and now in the House of Lords saying that trying to give voter ID is trying to give a solution to a problem that doesn't exist? Mr Kern, I can give you some of the time back. And thank you. And, and, and extraordinarily, and this will be new to members of the Scottish Nationalist Party, but uh, it is possible in the Conservative Party for us to have honest differences of view, something that never happens in the SNP because, of course, that's simply not allowed. You have to think what everybody gets told by the hierarchy, the high command of the nationalist government. That's not how the Conservative Party is, and I'm very proud of that fact, by the way. But there are so many issues that are positive about this bill. Regulation of, uh, on, uh, regulations on voter ID, yes, improving accessibility for disabled voters, empowering British citizens who live overseas. Um, but all of these areas that are devolved will remain devolved. Yep. I really don't know why the minister's getting so excited. And it's my belief that these changes the UK government are introducing and proposing for UK general elections will strengthen British democracy. In 2014, a report titled Electoral Fraud in the UK, the Electoral Commission concluded, and I quote, based on the evidence we gathered during the review, uh, based on the evidence we gathered during the review, is that this risk, the introduction of voter ID, can be managed and therefore is therefore right to make this change for the sake of the benefits it will bring in terms of improving the security of the system. A similar requirement already exists in Northern Ireland. 
where ID to vote has been required since 2002, as well as in many other countries, including many other European countries. I would have thought, thought that alone would have sold the benefits yeah. of all of this to the SNP, who will follow anything that they think is being done in other European countries. And for the Labour Party, I mean, it was the Labour Party that introduced voter ID requirements for Northern Ireland. And far from dissuading people from voting in the 2003 general election, what happened was there was a higher turnout in Northern Ireland than there was in any other part of the United Kingdom. So I'm afraid Labour on this issue are really um, scraping the barrel as well, frankly. So um, I don't know how much time I've got left. I've, lost, I've had so much fun. I've lost track of how long I've got. I can give you another minute. I've got another minute. Well, look, I've got lots more that I could say, and I'm not going to be able to say it. But in all honesty, I would say to uh, the, the, the members of the Scottish Parliament that this is a reserve bill dealing with reserve matters about UK general elections. There is no power grab from the UK government. The only power grab we witness in this parliament are the antics of the SNP, who gradually draw all power to themselves and then dispense it on the basis of grace and favour. That's really not the way a democracy works, and that is why I fully support the measures contained in this bill before the UK Parliament, which will, I repeat, strengthen our and increase the security of our democracy, one of the oldest in the world and one of the most successful in one of the most successful unions between countries in the history of the world.